Hey guys, this is Faster U4 brought to you by Fitland, Tailwind Nutrition, Biomax, and Capital Cycles. If you're a cyclist, you want to go faster? Then it is giddy up. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Faster U4 brought to you by Fitland. Tailwind Nutrition, Biomax, and Capital Cycles. Hey, we bike racing on the weekend. And I won. Let me tell you all about it. Uh, I'm going to tell you what happened and what I learnt. Coaching tip of the week. It's a goodie. And it applies to everyone. At any time. I'm going to tell you what grinds my gears. And next weekend's race, which is the big daddy kind of of spring which is the North Island Team Series race 3 which has the biggest climb of the series in it and will affect how everything goes so let me tell you all about that also some changes to that course very late and different to what is down there uh, I got the inside skinny dip on that uh, from one of the organizers on the weekend so i'll tell you what that is All right so let me tell you about what happened on the weekend i went along to the wellington masters cycling club graded road race out in the tropical upper hut the delicious wallaceville circuit decent bit of climbing on here some rollers some flat a bit of everything beautiful day nice 18 degrees rest in just a jersey Hard to believe, I know. This is a classic example, my friends, of a good legs day. Let's have a look at some data. Uh, time of 1 hour and 48 minutes. 43 seconds, a distance of 64.1 k's. 797 meters of climbing, so a little bit, not that much. Ooh, good left-right balance, 49.51, that's fine. Average speed, 35.4. Average power, all inclusive, 293 for an effective power slash normalized power of 329 watts. Now that's quite, that's quite big. It's not the biggest. Uh, my biggest is about uh, 15 to 20 watts higher than that, but it's pretty big, and it did not feel like it at all. So um, when your form's good and it doesn't feel that hard and you can look at your effective power it's quite high that's that's telling you that the uh, the difference between your perceived exertion and the reality the higher that is the better your form is and um uh, my form's probably not that bad right now it's coming down a little i think but it's not that bad and that that proves it that's another good reason to train with power is how are you supposed to have an objective measurement for any of that if you don't actually have a power meter and guys will say oh it's having good legs or bad legs well how do you know you can't just rely on what you think or your heart rate. You have to go by power. And that's a good reason why you're only going to know what your form is truly like and how your training's paid off if you can actually measure it. Training load 121, pretty hard. So, uh, story of the race was that uh, a grade went away. It was always going to be, um, it was always, always going to break up every lap we had five climbs of the Wallaceville hill climb that's that biggie there uh that's it's not huge uh the hill climb itself is what have we got there it's just over four minutes or so average gradient of about six to seven percent so just a nice medium grade climb uh the bunch was split on the first time up because i was pretty strong there my tactic from the start was to climb at threshold power why climb on a threshold power well if, if my threshold power is pretty much the max that anyone else can do in terms of power to weight about five watts per kilo and i know i'm at threshold i'm not burning any matches i'm going about as fast as i can and it's likely all the rest of the guys are burning matches having to stay with me i don't have to blow them off my wheel that's not going to help but if i sit there at threshold and keep an eye on what the other guys were doing that would help so uh just descended that first climb uh, threshold of just under about 385 watts that was nice after that climb really only four guys managed to stay on with me uh thomas borschenstein oliver ferry and richard 
Sutton. So we went pretty well for the next two or so laps. Um, third time up Willisville Hill. Uh, actually, sorry, on the on the way up coming over Mangaroa Hill, I put in an attack and managed to dislodge Mr. Sutton. Uh, just holding about um, ah, 500, 600 watts for about 40 seconds there. It wasn't massive, but it was enough um, to dislodge Mr. Sutton. And so my plan from that no, from really the first lap onwards was just to keep this going, <coughs> attacking on hard parts, uh, threshold power climb to try to keep dropping guys with the idea to maybe drop the last one or two in the final lap. That's kind of what happened. Third time up Wallaceville Hill, me versus Ollie versus Thomas. Um, Thomas and Ollie, good for them, put in some attacks near the bottom. You can see my power to get onto their wheel in the first sort of 30 seconds, about 500 to 520 watts. Um, at that point I could see they were a little bit drilled, so I continued um, and for the remainder of the climb. Um, I would have liked Ollie to come with me and I did ask him to. I think he was the better of the two on the climbs, but uh, he was not able to get on my wheel. And this is where I took kind of an opportunity, I'll talk about that in a minute, where, about taking opportunities, that's where I took it. And um, continued the rest of the climb, just over three minutes, about 417 watts. Um, just maybe add or slightly above threshold power, so I wasn't going to blow. And continue the rest of the race on my lonesome. Uh, so for the remaining sort of 45 minutes of the race, um, putting an average an EP of 328 watts, heart rate 150, just nicely just um, between my lactate 3 and lactate 4, just nice sustainable TT sort of pace uh, for most of it, and that's where I won. So as far as results come, uh, we had me with a time of 148, about two and a bit minutes ahead of Ollie, who outsprinted Thomas Borschenstein on the line to take a nice second, which is good, followed in by Richard Sutton, Glenn Owen, Jonathan Leonard, and a couple of DNFs, Steve Chapman and Karen Allwood. B grade, Colin Sullivan taking the win from Warwick Mosin and Tony Gisto. C grade, Stuart the Savage Preston, Fitlab Rider taking a, uh, a maiden victory from Sergio Gamero Jr. and Murray Peebles. D grade, still 60Ks. Uh, Rebecca Owen just out fighting my man, Alan Fitlab Kosiarski for first in the D grade. Followed in by Malcolm Standrill about a minute later and in D grade. Uh, sorry, E grade, only only one lap less I think, so it's pretty, pretty solid. Uh, John Wood taking it miles ahead of Angela Campbell and Deborah Wright. So I suspect he, like me, was taking a chance, taking an opportunity. So that's the race. Let me tell you what I learned. Coaching tip of the week is taking opportunities. So in any race, uh, you know, that you don't quite know what's, what's going to happen and where. Sometimes you can plan it out, but, you know, like everyone knows you can plan races uh, you can plan them out as much as you like and they don't necessarily go to plan. But one thing you do know is that in any race, whether it's in the first minute or halfway or near the end, there will always be little opportunities. And what I mean by that is times when the gas goes off, you can sneak off, um, guys might have, you know, attacked and then they're, they're feeling tired and, and you can counterattack and, and get a, you know, get a wedge in. So always think of any time where you've got a little opportunity, grab the little wedge, the little metaphorical wedge out of your back pocket and stick it in. Stick the wedge in. Wedge that gap open. Wedge that little opportunity open. See what happens. Now, you might try that and nine times out of ten, maybe nothing will come from it. But they're free opportunities for you. And all that it costs you is paying attention. You know, so many times I see this where guys will be off the front and they don't even realize it. 
there's a, that's when they need to be looking around and seeing what other guys are doing, paying attention, looking at the bunch, looking at who's there, who isn't, grabbing that wedge out of their pocket and sticking it in and wedging it open, see what happens. Because from that, different, lots of different opportunities can present themselves in the race. There could be someone off the back who's actually a danger to you, they can't get on the wheel, maybe they were having a drink and they shouldn't have been. Maybe um, some good guys will bridge up to you, you can work with them and go away. Maybe you'll actually stay away by yourself if guys think you're not a threat and they shut down. So anytime you get an opportunity, grab your wedge, stick it in, wedge it open, see what happens, see what comes from it. It's free and it only costs you paying attention. Uh, and the reason that applies to this race is because I didn't really expect Thomas and... Um, and Ollie to attack much at the bottom of that climb, but they did. And the reason that that was an option opportunity was because immediately I could see they kind of paid for it a little bit. They both slowed quite a lot and had that look on their face. So I knew that that was where I needed to get my wedge and stick it in. And I did and wedged it open. Um, that was good. And so that doesn't always work, but it's free. All right, so um, um, next race, Northland Team Series 3. Uh, this is Martinborough, Tora, Martinborough. And this is uh, a very important race for the series because what happens on this course and a uh, specific part of it will determine a lot of what happens from here. So in short, you're going to head out from Martinborough. You're going to take a lefty up White Rock Road. You're going to go over some... Yeah, Stuff on the map that doesn't look that strong, but it's actually uh, yeah, some fairly strong little climbs. And this is all within the first 5Ks at the 11K mark or so. No, is it 15? Maybe if at 15Ks in, you're going to hit uh, the big climb. So this is um, about 7 to 9% gradient. So it's a medium gradient, steepish in some places. And it is going to take you 10 to 12 minutes at race pace. This is an FTP watts per kilo type of climb. And I suspect if nothing weird happens, the selection on this will just be made of the best climbers in the group, in the bunch. And they will um, they will continue to go away based on the idea that the bunch won't chase if most of the teams are represented there. So if you're a good climber, get uh, in the selection on that climb. You're going to go down the valley and turn around and come back over the other side. The other side isn't so steep, but it's important. And go over those rollers again. You're going to finish on a gravel circuit just outside of Martin Barrow there. The Pro Elite will do that three times. I think um, Masters will do it twice. Now, there's been a change. Namely, it's going to be done counterclockwise, which you kind of expect that gravel section rather than clockwise. So in other words, you're going to come down off White Rock Road and you're going to be going quite fast. So take this next right-hander into Shooting Butts Road, the gravel, carefully. You don't want to be honking too much speed through there and go sideways on the gravel. And you're going to go counterclockwise. You're going to go down Shooting Butts Road, which is the gravel. You're going to go down Dublin Street. And uh, you are going to turn left into Jellicoe Street. Uh, the finish line will be somewhere just after that. And uh, Masters will do another lap. Elite will do two more. So, uh, yeah, do, careful on that right-hand corner from White Rock into Shooting Butts Road. That's super important. Uh, I would personally think that uh, it's worth expending a little energy to be near the front on that gravel because it's possible you'll, you'll stick your wheel in a pothole or something or it might be dusty, you can't see that well. Um, I think being on the front would be good. Knowing where the finish line is, uh, will be important as well, and that's a uh, bit all, all behind in importance uh, being in the selection on that climb. If you can't, you know, if you're not a climber and, um, you know, you struggle on that sort of climb, you know, it's an FTP watts per kilo climb, so you're going to have to be at your threshold power, and ideally your watts per kilo is going to be good. If you can't do that, you may want to counter-attack on those uh, three little short climbs, which are approximately... Uh, 30 kilometers um, from the finish, 40 to 30 kilometers from the finish or so, and um, try to stay away from there. They're only very short power climbs, 30 seconds to a minute or so, 
that are quite different in character. So if you're a power rider, that might be good for you. Uh, what happens from there is going to um, dictate a lot of the series because guys who maybe did a bit better, the sort of the sprinters in the first and second races, maybe not so hot in this one. Race four is also very hilly and has a hilltop finish. Uh, race five is again is, is reasonably chunky and hilly, um, but it doesn't doesn't really finish on a hill climb or anything. I don't think. Maybe a small one, but it's certainly nothing like three and four. All right, so that is coming up. I'm looking forward to it. And I um, I hope me and the Fit Lab team can do well. Uh, all right, I'll leave it there as always. If you'd like a coaching plan or testing, you can contact me at fitlab.co.nz. You can send me an email, steve at fitlab.co.nz. As always, this is brought to you by Fit Lab. Tail Nutrition, Biomaxer, and Capital Cycles. See you on the weekend. Thanks for watching slash listening to Fast You Fall. Brought to you by FitLab, Capital Cycles, Tailwind Nutrition, and Biomaxa. If you'd like to get in touch for a coaching program or testing, you can get a hold of me, steve at fitlab.co.nz. Go to fitlab.co.nz. Talk soon, guys.